Good afternoon. Welcome to the August 16th Virtual Roundtable with Idaho Commerce. Today we will be discussing Idaho manufacturing and construction opportunities in the advanced nuclear industry. Before we get started with introductions of today's speakers, I would like to remind everyone to type in your questions as you have them, um, and we will get to those at the end of the presentation. If there are any questions you are unable to answer during the broadcast, we will make sure to follow up offline. This is also recorded and will be available after the broadcast. Uh, today we have um, Scott Bailey from New Scale Power and Brian Atkinson from Flora talking about advanced nuclear opportunities for Idaho companies. And to kick things off, we have Bobby Joe Mulman, Director of Idaho Commerce. Bobby Joe stepped into the role of Director in 2017 after serving as the Chief Operating Officer for the Department. Before leading economic development efforts for the state of Idaho, she served in the office of Idaho Governor Otter from 2009 to 2016 and is a member of the Leaders in Nuclear Energy Line Commission. So with that, Bobby Jo. Well, thank you, Amanda, and thank you to everyone who's participating in the call today. Um, Idaho is really at a great potential right now to be one of a kind states producing small modular reactors and that is possible because of our great resource in the Idaho National Lab which is one of the lead nuclear energy lab in our back door here in Idaho so I'm really interested to for you all to hear the perspective of New Scale and Florida kind of talk about as we look at the potential of attracting this project into our state you know, where where the opportunities are for manufacturing in that supply chain. And I think it's going to be really interesting for everyone to hear as you look at a supply chain, how far that goes out. And especially for the state of Idaho, you know, this project will bring in just the project itself, but all these other cottage industries that will follow because of the production of these SMRs. Um, so with that, I am going to turn the time over to Ellie Brown with the um, Idaho National Lab. I look forward to the conversation today and happy to answer any questions you may all have at the end of the presentation. Thanks, uh, Director Muleman. Um, first and foremost, wanted to thank the Department of Commerce for hosting this roundtable. Uh, your partnership and leadership on this issue is greatly appreciated. Um, Partnerships are going to be the, the keystone to this project's success, uh, leading with, obviously, Governor Otter, the Department of Commerce, uh, the state legislature, and then down even to the local support. So let me just give a quick overview of INL's role within um, this project and then turn most of the time over to the experts so you guys can hear the real opportunities. Um, some of you may or may not know, but uh, INL has a nearly 70 year history here in Idaho, uh, mainly around nuclear. We've hosted and operated 52 reactors, which makes us super unique in having the space capabilities, people, and the passion, expertise uh, to host this first of a kind small modular reactor. So needless to say, we're really excited to support the project. Uh, they're uh, slated to site the, the project on our site in eastern Idaho, just west of Idaho Falls. Uh, and we intend to use two of the modules for research and development. Um, just the last thing I'd like to add is that this is a top priority for our lab leadership from a perspective of ensuring that advanced reactors um, get off the get off the chop off the chopping block and get uh, to the demonstration point um, it's an important time in nuclear energy's um, uh, sector and uh, in order to to continue the success of uh, an us as a global leader in safety and technology for nuclear standards uh, we're really excited to support this technology to ensure that continues to happen so Again, happy to answer any questions like Director Muleman, but uh, I'd like to introduce um, your two speakers for the day, uh, Scott Bailey, who is the Vice President of Supply Chain with New Scale Power, and Brian Atkinson, who is the Director and Functional Lead with Floor Nuclear Power Construction. And I understand that Scott might be starting. Yes, thank you. You should be ready to go. Scott, if you're ready, we're ready for you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the input. Uh, I'm assuming that you can hear me okay, Amanda, before I get too far? Yes, we can hear you just fine. Okay, um, so I, we appreciate the opportunity of being invited today. 
Um, we, uh, we, we, we love Idaho and we love coming to Idaho. We always, uh, we always feel welcome. We always feel like the uh, red carpet is rolled out, whether it's uh, the Mark Peters on down through the, at the lab uh, or the, um, you know, or uh, the, the various cities and the, and, and the state and the legislators and so on and so forth. So yes, we too believe it's important in Idaho and uh, the USA is pretty important to us. So what we'll do, what I want to do today is I'm pretty excited to talk about uh, New Scale as I always am, um, give you a little bit of an update of, of where we're at, what's different about what we're doing in supply chain, uh, talk a little bit about um, what uh, specifically uh, the kinds of things that New Scale is looking for, um, both uh, uh, you know near term and, and longer term, um, and then Brian will Brian will talk more about um, what I'll call the floor scope, which is mostly the balance, which is the, mostly the balance of plant side and the construction side. Um, so without, um, so the, uh, I, I, I got the slide up, but I'm not going to go through it in much detail, but I would say that we've just recently gone through a, a rebranding effort um, where we're trying to characterize new scale or we're characterizing new scale as uh, uh, a much more, uh, Warm and friendly, and uh, changing the power that changes our world is kind of the uh, uh, the slogan that we go with these days. And um, th I, I encourage all of you that are participating to go out to our website. There's a nice video that will give us uh, give you that uh, the flavor uh, and the imaging. So we have our committed commitment to both uh, to people, planet, and prosperity. Um, this is our this is our vision that new scale provides scale or emission. New scale provides new scale power provides scalable advanced nuclear technologies for the production of electricity, heat, and clean water to improve the quality of life for people around the world. So as you can see where the intersection of these three things are is where we're at. So we've been around a long time. Who are we? Um, we actually were formed in 2007 and we're what is known as a single purpose entity. In other words, we exist for one purpose, and that is to uh, uh, to develop and commercialize uh, the new scale small modular reactor. However, the roots go deep into the Department of Energy back in the year 2000 when uh, what's known as the Maslar program, which was the multi-application multi small light water reactor program uh, back in 2000 is where the new scale design was actually born. Um, so we've been around, so the idea has been around for a long time and it's just that in 2007 new scale took it, you know, off the, uh, uh, you know, off the university campus, so to speak, and, and uh, has been working to commercialize it ever since. Um, very big day or very big time in our, uh, in our history was when floor stepped in. Um, as you all know, Floor is uh, global and uh, uh, a very large juggernaut in the in the industry. And uh, Brian will talk a little bit about that. But when they came in in 2011, they took the lead ownership position in in, in New Scale and have been a um, has been a, uh, a very staunch uh, supporter since then. 2013, we uh, won a competitive uh, bid of 226 million dollars for funding, which we call the funding opportunity, which, you know, allowed us uh, that with that matching funds allowed us to continue to progress where we're at. Um, you can see we've very active in patents. We've got a, we've had a lot of people work on this project where um, we're about 330 or so to just over 300 uh, full-time employees uh, spread out in a few offices in the United States. Um, and, uh, we're making great progress with the NRC. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and we're, we've had some additional DOE cost share awards uh, this year and uh, we're, we're targeting a 2026 commercialization. So in a nutshell, that's, that's who we are. So let's talk a little bit about the plant. And the reason why I wanna talk about the plant is because obviously the supply chain stems from everything that we have in the plant. So it's, pretty much divided into the nuclear steam supply system, which is on, which starts with the new scale power module, which is uh, that reactor that you see in the, uh, uh, in the water there. Um, 
our reactor is quite different because it has a reactor vessel um, within a containment vessel. So it's, uh, um, it's uh, double vessels, so to speak, double pressure vessels. Um, we don't have a big concrete uh, containment structure. We have steel structures. Uh, but everything that's safety related or everything that's nuclear, if you will, as we like to use the term, uh, is housed inside the, inside the boundaries of the, uh, uh, of the containment vessel. So um, uh, generally speaking, we do have you know, isolation valves on the outside, but generally speaking, it's everything inside the containment vessel is what's considered safety. And then outside of that, with, the except, with a few exceptions like instrumentation controls, um, and those kinds of things, there, are, there is very little that's safety related. And that'll become important later on. So basically the steam is made inside the, uh, inside the new scale power module and it goes out to a traditional, um, uh, traditional steam plant. Um, it should be noted that what's shown here is, this is just one uh, new scale power module and uh, our current design is up to 12 um, currently, uh, well, modules uh, in a, in a building. And this is kind of structures how, I mean, this kind of shows you how the, uh, uh, how the uh, reactor vessel sits inside. You can see there's slots for six. So you get a cutaway view. There's a slot for uh, six of these in the reactor building, six on each side. Um, and these, this building right here is the one that's in the center of the site layout. So basically we've got the modules that sit in the pool. They do, uh, develop the steam. And we'll talk a little bit about where, well, actually later we talk about where the steam goes. So, so but this is a whole new approach to construction and it's a whole new approach to operation and, and design so far. We, you know, and part of it is that the nuclear steam supply system is, uh, it, start, it all starts in a factory. Um, our module gets built in a factory and it gets shipped to the site. So our nuclear steam supply system comes with uh, uh, some assembly required. Uh, so you really just need to, uh, uh, not as bad as a gas grill or something, but uh, you just really need mm -hmm. to uh, take the individual large pieces and assemble them at the site. Um, and uh, so it is a little bit different approach. A little bit about where we're at because this is important because folks will want to understand when do we start issuing the you know contracts for real stuff that goes into real plants. So as you can see, it's um, uh, Funding a funding a development of a small modular reactor is is not for the faint of heart. You can see up here in the top of the cloud that we'll spend over a billion dollars uh, by the time this is over, um, and uh, you know we're we're approaching the 700 million mark right now. And as you can see, we're at the um, uh, DCA completed. You can see our little mountain climber here. Um, the DCA completed in 2016, and we're right about this part here, which we'll talk about here, which is you know awarding our major fabrication um, uh, contract here. So we're, as you can see, there's uh, COLA submittals and um, design certification and so on that we still have to go, and uh, we've got to complete the design because the, uh, as you most of you know in this industry, is the design certification is a, a large part of the design from a safety related perspective, but there's a lot more that still has to get done. So as far as the design certification, um, it's going well. Um, it's proceeding ahead of schedule by all accounts and by all uh, metrics. Um, we're in the process of resolving our what is known in our industry is the RAIs, the request for additional information from the NRC. Uh, we update these things daily and uh, we're on track to completing all these. Um, and uh, there's been some improved uh, um, uh, processes by the NRC as well. And that has streamlined how things go in the communication processes. They tend to group a lot of things uh, together instead of uh, piecemealing a lot of things like some have done in the past. Um, and uh, we, there's management plans that get put together for, you know, key, key items that need resolution. So, you know, we're expecting a, an on-time design approval right now of September of, of 2020. And our first appointment, so uh, as you guys all well know, is, uh, uh, is part of the Western Initiative for Nuclear, um, slated to be right there on your site at uh, Idaho National Labs. 
Um, uh, DOE has also provided some uh, funding to, to UAMS to help get their uh, project going. Um, we hope this is one of many of the uh, uh, Western uh, small module reactors, but uh, the carbon-free the carbon-free power project uh, sponsored by UAMPS is the uh, is the lead, and that's the one that we use. Uh, that's the one that we track with respect to uh, readiness, particularly when it comes to the supply chain. Um, won't spend a lot of time in economics because this is a, this is a supply chain, but a discussion. But it just suffices to say that, that uh, uh, there are a lot of things that are economically um, uh, good about this uh, uh, new scale. Um, if we couldn't uh, compete out there in the marketplace, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So we're we're confident that we can uh, uh, that we can compete with other options. Um, when when put on a level playing field, and uh, particularly out in the future, so we have lots of benefits that allow this thing to be economically uh, competitive. So let's use the uh, the last ten minutes that I have here to talk about to talk about the supply chain. I uh, want to reiterate that the new scale power plant um, is designed in America, licensed in America, going to be deployed first in America, and it's manufactured substantially in America. I underline substantially because with 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 everything, there'll be certain uh, with most things. There are certain things that uh, uh, that aren't available currently in the United States, and uh, those are the things that we're actively trying to help industry um, to to get there. But uh, there will be some things that would have to go um, offshore. So. The new scale as our design is quite uh, uh, game changing and uh, results in a paradigm shift. Um, supply chain is also uh, requires a shift of thinking in nuclear. Nuclear particularly is uh, typically focused on a one plant, um, one reactor or three reactors, you know, kind of uh, uh, project. Whereas this is more like a steady state kind of manufacturing entity. In other words, then we, when we develop a supply chain, we need to develop a supply chain for a product line, not a supply chain for a particular power plant. Um, so that's uh, that's quite a quite a shift. So when we th when we um, are negotiating agreements with suppliers, we're talking about you know long term agreements for modules that encompass more than one plant, um, and that also lends itself to the things like standardization and the other things that are critically important to keep this thing economic. So what's different, the nuclear steam supply system is pretty much all in the module, in the new scale power module, as I mentioned. The NPM is factory built, don't have safety related equipment in them. Um, and neither do the support buildings. All of our safety related equipment is mostly in the NPM, but all of it's in the reactor building. Um, and I talked about a pressure vessel within a pressure vessel. And also the fact that we have uh, up to 12 different power plants on our one site, um, not just uh, you know, yeah, not just one, two, or three. It's uh, each one of those modules is its own uh, separate power plant, which means we have some quantities as well. So it's truly small modular uh, generation, smaller equipment, smaller piping. Um, we don't have safety related pumps. We don't have you know, pumps that uh, in our primary systems, and we don't have safety related electric power. And I'm going to repeat that again because it's extraordinarily important, from, especially coming from somebody who spent a fair, <laughs> a long time in the nuclear industry and where many of our challenges were on the uh, 1E classified uh, safety related electrical equipment. We don't have any of that. Our, our plant does not, not require it uh, for safe shutdown. Factory built modules. Is OEM equipment, those kinds of things. Think of the new scale power plant is much more of a, you know, uh, uh, a module assembly uh, versus a uh, versus stick built construction. And as I mentioned before, we got 12 of everything, particularly on the balance of plant side of the system. This is how we've divided up the the scope of work when it comes to supply chain. New scale powers get everything on the uh, uh, base basically the nuclear steam supply system. So it's the module and the associated systems that protect the module. And floor has the rest, uh, which is the 
balance of plant, civil structural, all those kinds of things. So the actual balance of plant equipment is housed in these two turbine buildings that you can see are perpendicular to the uh, reactor building, which is in the center. So where are we? Um, we've done a complete assessment of all of our work, um, all of the new scale scope, top to bottom from a bill of materials. So we, we know what's out there. We know what's in our, on our list of things to do, so to speak. Um, we've got several key agreements that have been negotiated or, or in process, and this is not all of them, but this is an idea of, this is some of the more critical, longer, uh, longer lead kind of items. Um, we've got um, the, new, uh, the NPM, New Scale Power Module fabricator, fabricator Selection Process is near completion. I got a slide on that. And we have done supply chain strategies for, for each of the things that, uh, uh, that, that we're responsible for. And, uh, and we're on track to get our own ASME and STAMP certification in 2019. So this is the fabricator selection process that I had mentioned. Um, I won't go through all of the all of the line items on here, uh, but we are past supplier selection and into the contract negotiation phase. So we're in this uh, uh, we're in this latter part of uh, uh, part of this phase. Um, I think there's a slide here that says. Uh, when we expect to announce as well too. So we had um, that whole process was, it's been uh, going on since if you look back at that, um, uh, this slide here, we started this process in November of 2016. Um, and uh, we are just at the point now where we're, we're discussing contract terms. Um, we received five proposals in, um, in January three from domestic bidders, all of them were represented some uh, kind of team, um, and two of them were from international bidders. We ended up down selecting and the evaluation process is complete, negotiation has started, and uh, we expect to make some kind of announcement um, either this month or into next month. But uh, we're, we're, we're ready, we just have to, uh, like I said, we have to complete the first part of our um, uh, uh, contract negotiations before we're ready to announce. So when you think about this, we've done some estimates about what does, you know, what does the SMR supply chain equal? And uh, this is just kind of an estimate of where the jobs come from in, in manufacturing. As we all know, jobs are, jobs are making what this you know this economy go around and and we're all chasing uh, chasing the jobs and particularly U.S. jobs and um, Idaho jobs and so on and so forth. So there's quite a bit of an opportunity here. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd mentioned before is that uh, um, we're very keen on not only uh, American made in America, but we're also very keen on um, Idaho as well too. So we're very interested in whatever. Uh, whatever opportunities that we can develop in Idaho as well. Uh, these are some of the activities that are going on right now. Um, this is some steam generator. This is a steam generator uh, uh, test test uh, test uh, test device. I mean, a test uh, <laughs> article. Uh, this is some fuel. This is some uh, a forging that's being developed. So, and this is a advanced manufacturing HIPS product. So it's more than just paper, and that's what this slide is. These are some steam generated tube sports that are actually made at Premier right down the street from you all. Um, so this gives you an idea that we're we're not only uh, you know we're not only working through our design, we also have some you know hardware and some and some testing, and there'll be more prototypes and things going on in the future. We just uh, recently received a bunch of about 120 steam generator tubes for which we will put into a uh, prototypic steam generator. So, um, looks like I got a couple of minutes. I just wanted to, I just wanted to share is, is, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, folks are disappointed because we don't have a lot of safety related equipment, um, which means that, uh, for those safety related suppliers that, uh, um, you know, that they don't have opportunities. Um, not, not completely true, but it's certainly we are, uh, we do have a whole lot less and that's one of the things I wanted to make sure that I highlight is that uh, we just don't have a lot of safety related equipment in our plant. That's one of the one of the reasons why it's uh, you know so economic and it's so safe. 
Um, the, uh, uh, the other thing I would mention is that we're still quite a ways away from um, firming up our supply chain. Um, there'll be more opportunities as time goes on, particularly in Brian's area, and he'll, and he'll talk about this, because on the balance plant side of the house, it's, you know, they, they're, they're trailing the nuclear design, um, and that's, you know, that's the way it's supposed to work, but, uh, uh, but they have, that they'll have opportunities uh, uh, as well. Some of the critical items that, that I already described, whether we're talking about fuel or um, we're talking about those, uh, you know, fuel or the instrumentation control system or uh, some of the other things, we've been, we've been on those for quite some time and we've got suppliers in line for some of those. And uh, um, beyond that, anyway, we're, we've got, um, we're always willing to talk to suppliers to develop these opportunities. And like I said, we have a particular uh, soft spot for uh, folks in Idaho, so um, very interested in hearing from you all. I did not put a slide on this, but I do. Uh, we do have a uh, supplier registration portal. If you go out to the New Scale website to watch that cool video, um, also take a moment to uh, register. Let us know who you are and what you do, and uh, and, and and put any material up. So that is the end of my presentation, Amanda. Thank you. Um, one quick question though, before we move over to Brian, will these slides be available? Or are you willing to make them available? Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And before we get to the rest of the questions, I'm gonna go ahead and let Brian um, present his uh, slides and then we will take those questions. So, Brian, I think you are muted. I will go ahead and queue up your slides here. Great, Amanda. Do you uh, do you hear me okay here before I get started? Yes. Great. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, today for participating uh, on the call, and I also want to uh, thank the group that has organized this. Uh, Floor really thanks uh, all of our uh, support uh, from this team, and uh, I'll look forward to uh, talking with uh, Idaho vendors and suppliers here in the future. Uh, today, I just kind of want to start out with our uh, slide uh, number two here, which is the nuclear supply and how it's different. Um, talking about quality programs to uh, meet uh, safety related requirements. Um, obviously, 10, Title 10 uh, Code Federal Regulations, Part 50, Appendix B. Uh, we're talking ASME NQA1 type work on this facility, uh, which is uh, nuclear regulatory, and certain countries have different safety related requirements. And uh, I, I do ask that uh, all of you become familiar with these uh, regulations. It's very important to the construction of this facility uh, to support the uh, 2026 uh, commercialization uh, timeframe that we're looking at. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, high priority floor is our uh, healthy safety culture um, and, and what drives that is personal accountability uh, continue to have a questioning attitude uh, when looking at uh, and providing services to floor i think that's very important in our industry here uh, also effectively uh, having safety communications there's always better ways to uh, look at things and look at things from the safety aspect and uh, at floor we push that uh, value very high uh, decision making, uh, obviously a respectful work environment is, is what we're looking here also at Flora went on project site and uh, continuous learning. Um, this industry has a lot to learn and we still have a lot more to learn uh, from, from vendors and from suppliers and uh, that's always good to have constant communication and I think this is, is obviously one of those uh, areas today that we're, we're having this discussion on supply chain and construction. Um, next slide, please. A little bit of overview on floor. Um, obviously headquartered in Dallas, Texas. Our uh, nuclear power division, uh, where I'm located, is in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, 
Florida's provided nuclear services uh, since 1946 to clients. And uh, some of our experience and expertise is uh, design, uh, reactor design modification, uh, non-reactor design builds, they'll perform reactor procurement and construction. Uh, this is where this plant will fall, actually, is in the self-perform work uh, with uh, procurement construction. I'll talk about that here uh, a little bit later in our slide presentation. Uh, and finally, we do a lot of uh, nuclear uh, decommissioning as well, uh, along with our uh, experience. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, we have a sort of a comprehensive supply chain. Um, really structured uh, to support projects worldwide with our engineering uh, procurement and construction teams. Um, we also bring in uh, expertise uh, from 18 different countries and offices that can support uh, projects uh, like the New Scale project. Uh, we look very forward to uh, utilizing all of our resources uh, throughout all of our offices uh, on this venture. Um, Client solutions we offer, uh, staffing, uh, requirements, planning, resources and sourcing, purchasing, expediting of materials, uh, fabrication, servicing, and warehousing. What you see here is our floor supply chain model. Um, some of the services that we provide uh, are contract management, uh, third party sales, logistics is big for us with uh, moving large. Uh, pieces of equipment and module applications. And then we look at our commercial strategies and global sourcing of uh, resources. Next slide, please. Thanks. As we get into our fully integrated uh, engineering, procurement, fabrication, and construction project delivery, uh, obviously, Hood Floor, we, we provide uh, full turnkey services on project delivery. These are some of our uh, large focus items in, in doing that. Um, engineering and procurement, uh, we look at our third generation execution model, which is a, a, a lot of modeling of the balance of plant that will be done on the new scale along with the turbine island and uh, we'll utilize our, our third gen module uh, execution to be able to do that, utilizing smart plant 3D and other software. Uh, also, the modular fabrication, uh, we also run a third gen model uh, modular fabrication software and uh, program it floor where we're looking at standardizing uh, a lot of our bulks, uh, project piping sizes, uh, supports. At floor, we're looking at trying to standardize and make our install for our, our craft teams a lot easier uh, than exotics uh, that we've seen on projects in the past. So it's been a large focus uh, at Fleur here recently is uh, looking to standardize plants. And then we also get schedule optimization out of doing modular construction and fabrication, which helps deliver uh, these projects on time to clients. Supply chain, obviously we've talked a little bit about that this afternoon. Um, really reaching out to our suppliers uh, in Idaho is going to be, and vendors is going to be a big thing for this job. And I, Look forward to uh, meeting with you guys in, in, in the future uh, here in Idaho. And uh, I'll talk a little bit how to, more a little bit later on how to get involved with FLIR and, and, and we'll answer some questions towards the end. And then construction and, and startup, uh, obviously, uh, constructability uh, input is huge uh, from vendors and suppliers uh, as we start to move into the BOP design. Uh, and uh, Turbine Island design work uh, here in the future. Also, during construction, uh, we looked at vendors and suppliers to uh, get involved early in the constructability process. Uh, at Floor, we found uh, in the past that uh, doing this uh, saves our clients uh, a large amount of monies and schedule uh, by doing effective constructability reviews early and often with vendors and suppliers. Uh, also, a strength, strong safety culture uh, in IFF is uh, is huge at Floor. We we really stress uh, having a safe work environment. We expect our vendors and suppliers to to be safe when working on Floor jobs. Um, that's one of the, the key focal points of uh, us at Floor, and we also pass that down to our vendors and suppliers. 
And we're also always looking at new construction technologies. Um, that's that's kind of the, the, the new generation of things here, uh, looking at ways to model projects, looking at cost-effective ways of uh, bringing in different strategies, different uh, new innovative uh, materials uh, and supplies uh, to projects, always open to uh, listening and, and hearing about uh, the new technologies that are out there within the construction industry. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, new scale procurement requirements, um, obviously safety related uh, and non-safety related work will, will be happening at the, uh, the new scale plant um, in the BOP, Turban Island, uh, and uh, th these work areas are going to be very important. Um, and we, we we're have some examples here recently of some uh, short supplies that have happened uh, on other projects and we need to really think about and have further discussion in, in the future about our electrical materials and equipment that are being used on these jobs uh, along with our uh, structural several concrete materials uh, fabricated rebar fabricated structural steel and grout uh, we look at trying, we're trying to continue to, to drive costs down, and uh, we have some short supply of, of these type of uh, vendors and suppliers. So I do look forward to continuing to have conversation uh, with you all on, on ways that uh, we can, can really have an envision of, of bringing uh, a, a new scale plant to, uh, to Idaho. And these two areas here are really where we need to be focusing on, on some short supply. Uh, next slide, please. I want to talk a little bit here about some of the uh, quantities that we're going to be looking at uh, on the new scale project to kind of give everybody a flavor of the size of this project uh, coming to uh, potentially coming to the area here shortly. Um, we're looking at uh, over 80, 830,000 square foot of building. Uh, which is a, between the balance of plant, the nuclear island, turbine island. Um, we're also looking at about 190,000 cubic yards of concrete. Some of these numbers I'm, I'm talking to you are a little bit different on the slide. I updated them here uh, this morning, but I'm giving you the most accurate numbers uh, that I can at this time. Uh, we're looking at over uh, 8,000 tons of structural steel for the project, 12 12,000 instruments and instrumentation pieces, um, 100 and oh, 1.5 million feet of conduit that will be installed in the plant, and uh, 41,000 valves uh, and actuators that will also be uh, installed. Again, uh, balance of plant, some safety related, uh, for the most part, uh, non safety on uh, the balance of plant within the new scale uh, design. Next slide, please. Some potential subcontracts uh, that we'll be letting out uh, for this type of work and for, for the new scale design and plant. Uh, security, obviously, uh, a big thing on uh, during construction, uh, keeping our, uh, our plant and our work safe. Uh, earthwork, looking at uh, roughly 100 and Actually, 120 foot excavation here uh, with some setbacks and laybacks on the earthwork, uh, some early site preparation. Uh, survey, obviously, our uh, fencing and security again, prefabricated metal buildings. This is big uh, with our prefabrication of our, our modules, our fab shops when it comes to. Uh, uh, painting, coatings, uh, any of our uh, rebar uh, modification and bending uh, that needs to occur are going to be happening in these uh, prefabricated uh, facilities and buildings on site. Uh, we're looking at having some HVAC fabrication. Uh, again, some, some pieces that uh, might need to be uh, fabricated out in the field uh, due to fit-up purposes, etc. We'll be doing some on-site uh, fabrication and, and potentially uh, looking at having a large uh, HVAC 
contract here for uh, providing duct work on the job. Concrete, obviously, looking at, uh, I mentioned earlier, the, the cubic yards of concrete on the job. Uh, big thing here, we're going to be probably setting up uh, a couple of batch plants on site. So we'll be looking for uh, a vendor to be able to provide that. Uh, roads and, and keeping our uh, folks uh, and people supporting the job safe. So the infrastructure keeping uh, in and out of the project uh, in good working order so that we're getting in and out of the safe home every day. Uh, roofing, electrical, siding. Just your major construction items that you would think where floor will be going out to uh, vendors and, and, and looking for vendors uh, in the uh, Idaho area and surrounding states to, uh, to be able to support this job. Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, how to get involved with floor. Obviously, we'll, we'll, as Scott said, New Scale's got one, Floor's got one. We've got a couple portals here. Uh, that you'll be able to uh, log into as a floor supplier and contractor registering. And the way it will work uh, is when uh, New Scale and we decide to get a plant going at uh, Idaho, uh, we will we will set up a, a portal uh, which you'll go into and uh, log in and, and, and register your, your um, supplier and or contractor uh, for the project. It'll go through uh, our procurement uh, and supply chain group, who will then uh, be in contact uh, to get some more particulars and, and about your company and ensure that uh, you're able to uh, participate on our jobs and be qualified. Um, you'll be asked to complete a questionnaire as well uh, with uh, background typically on experience and key personnel. Um, and then please enter the keyword nuclear. Uh, that's big uh, as it goes through the, the floor system. So it's uh, pushed to the to the right supply chain folks uh, to be able to do uh, uh, the evaluation and be in contact with you. All right, uh, kind of uh, running to the end of my slide deck. Uh, obviously, I, I know there'll be a lot more questions as we move forward. Um, and we get into the balance of plant uh, turbine island and nuclear island civil construction. And uh, I look forward to talking to uh, the folks on the line and others uh, about getting involved with the uh, new scale plant in Idaho. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, no problem. So uh, the first question is from Bobby Jones. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, this is Bobby Joe with Commerce. Brian and Scott, thank you for that, um, those great presentations. Can you highlight or do a quick overview of if you're an existing company business in Idaho that, let's say, does, you know, fabrication in food manufacturing and have never really thought that maybe what you do crosses over or could apply in nuclear fabrication or something along those lines, can you maybe highlight how how it does or what those opportunities are for folks that you know might not right now specifically be in the nuclear realm but what they do could could apply to this project Brian do you want to start with that one or do you want me to start uh, I can just uh, really quickly touch on I think the first couple of slides at least uh, from the floor standpoint is uh, you know, looking at your company and going back and looking at uh, some of the, the requirements uh, for safety related type of construction and making sure that uh, your company has a quality program. That's one of the things that uh, the floor looks at as they bring on uh, vendors onto our approved suppliers list is looking at uh, their background within quality. Uh, and, and looking at what type of program they have. And I, I think a good slide was, is my second slide there to, to see if uh, your, your programs uh, can fall in alignment uh, with, with some of the requirements. If we can go back to slide page two there. Yeah, this, this one, actually page two, that, this one here uh, is, is really good uh, in terms of, um, if you back up one, Amanda, that would be good. The, there you go. Um, this one here, I think we, we always need to revisit this uh, in terms of, uh, 
ensuring that our companies uh, or the companies that will be supporting this project potentially in the in the future is, is looking at safe at the quality program and the requirements uh, very important at least for floor in terms of qualification Scott yeah, and the only thing I would my, my comment is more more of a generic one um, is that you know if there's a been there's been a lot of suppliers in my career that uh, that I have interfaced with that haven't always been nuclear suppliers or haven't always been suppliers to the you know to the we'll say the power industry the power construction industry so if you're you know if you're good at for instance like right now we're you know we're uh, we've been working with some um, I'll say some oil and gas non-traditional nuclear power plant folks relative to um, how you manipulate and move things around, you know, move large things around. So if you have a particular um, expertise that's, uh, uh, you, know, you know, that's valuable, you certainly can make the transition. Um, that's all I would comment. Great, thank you. Okay, let's get into some of these other questions. Uh, first up, is the COLA process underway? If not, is there an anticipated start date? I, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. Is the COLA process underway? If not, is there an oh, anticipated yeah. start date? Um, the short answer is it's it's the preliminary work has, has been started. In other words, they're talking about you know who's going to manage it and how that's going to work. So it should be it should be starting soon. I don't know the exact date. I'm not close enough to that, but we can get back on this. That's one we can get back to them on Amanda. Okay. The next question: Are the necessary power sale agreements in place to begin the COLA process? Yeah, so these are, these are, are, I'll say, they're more questions associated with UAMPs, and we don't have somebody on here from UAMPs, um, but all I know is that these power sales contracts and um, presentations have, are continuing. In fact, I'm aware of one that held, was held earlier this week, so um, I would say the effort's still underway. Okay, thank you. You want to okay. Uh, what are the required certifications a machine fab shop would need? What about the cer certifications for concrete providers, et cetera? Brian, you can. You I, think that? That I, I, I think. Yeah, I, I got, think. I uh, think they'll I probably refer you. Can you hear me now? Is there base? Am, am I still tuned uh, yeah, in? Yeah, I think we, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, at least on uh, from a concrete vendor standpoint, you know, the majority of the concrete here on the on the job will be uh, quality related uh, nuclear grade qu concrete, which will uh, be a requirement uh, that floor quality would come out and, and do an inspection of, of a facility and the materials that are. Um, being procured from that facility through a quarry. Um, there's a there's an extensive uh, there's extensive requirements, and I don't know them off the top of my head, so I'd have to get back to to the group here on the quality requirements. But it will be uh, there will be some uh, reviews done by poor quality to ensure that the concrete and the supply where it's coming from uh, meets the uh, codes and standards of what we're building toward and I, I, I can get more information on that and get our quality folks to uh, provide some additional information on that thank you um, will this be built with union trades yes the question is yes we will use union craft uh, in the area to the most extent possible Fantastic. When do New Scale and Floor expect the first dollars for physical components and materials to change hands and for what? 
Uh, I can I can start with that. Typically, um, it'll, it'll be some long lead time materials for the um, uh, for the new scale power module, um, which could occur as early as uh, uh, late 2019. Um, and most of the other stuff would would follow that. When I say long lead time, I'm typically talking about things like uh, the the major. Uh, pressure vessel forgings and those kinds of things, uh, the large ones, the large forgings. Um, so that's about the time. And if you're kind of following the, uh, you know, following how, um, you know, UAMPS's progression through the process too, is that that's usually at a time when we're, we've advanced the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the EPC contract, if you will, with UAMPS long enough, you know, far, far enough along as well too. So those things will track together typically. Yeah, with regard to floor 2020, 2021, obviously construction planning, uh, engineering, procurement, early stages with start in terms of uh, planning our, our projects and uh, obviously getting uh, involved uh, with uh, vendors and suppliers uh, early and often, as I mentioned, within our uh, planning and constructability process. Yeah, I'd like to also, this Scott, I, Scott, I want to add one more thing also is that, you know, for some of these things where we have, uh, you know, designing, design work to still do and prototyping to still do, my comment was, uh, my comment was related to what I would call products that's actually, go, first articles, product that's actually going to go into the plant, um, because money's changing hand with suppliers right now. Um, with respect to design work, with respect to building prototypes and doing testing and those kinds of things. So it's more what I was referring to is the product that actually goes into the power plant. I concur. Next question. Uh, what if we already have a floor or what if we are already a floor Idaho vendor? Do we need to register? Uh, yes, we'd have to re-register through the portal that I mentioned, just to flag nuclear, as I also mentioned, so that we would uh, be able to have our supply chain and procurement get in touch with uh, the folks that are already doing business with Floor. But you would make sure, what I would add, add to that is make sure you, you mention it in your uh, qualification and questionnaire that you uh, have done work with Floor, are doing work for floor at the current time. Thank you. What is the time frame to hire geotechnical services? Do you have an anticipated RFP date for this service? Good question, and uh, I do not have a date uh, as of yet. But that would that will be one of the first things uh, out of the gate that. Uh, floor we'll, we'll look at is doing some uh, site characterizations and geotechnical work. Thank you. What size are the individual reactions rated for? Um, currently, we're talking about a uh, uh, 50 megawatts electric, um, 160 megawatts thermal. Each reactor. Awesome. Will successful bidding contractors be posted so subcontractors can contract them? In, in what I, I'm, this is Scott, I will uh, I'll address in part one of the things that we're having a conversation with with potential fabricators is you know getting that information out there. So um, in one of the more active features that we'll be using doing with our portal, in fact, we're just starting to do some work on it right now, um, is to be able to do that type of listing. So it's more of a, instead of a stagnant, go in and, you know, go in and register a site, it'll be something more active where we will, we will post, um, we'll post major contracts that have been let so that people understand who these people are. Um, and also we'll be uh, telling people about contracts that, that are going to be let. Uh, or that are that are that are on the schedule, but uh, 
the short answer is yes, we will make that we will make that information available. Yeah, it's the same with floor as well on major uh, contracts, and uh, that'll also be taken care of and posted through the portal. Will hub zone certification be a consideration for bid award or solicitation? Was, was it? Uh, I'm sorry. Was it? Was it? Uh, was that a diversity supplier question, or was it a? Did you, was it a HUD question? Uh, I, I didn't catch the qualification. Hub zone is historically underutilized business yes. zone. Yeah, so current, current, currently it's a factor is because we're in a cost share program. Um, so fundamentally it's, it's driven by um, whose money is being spent, right? Um, so in the cases, for instance, the money that we're spending today, which is cost share money, which we share with the government, we do have, um, uh, we do have to include that as part of our evaluation. Um, whether or not there would be on the, uh, uh, the construction work, I. I, I haven't seen anything on that yet. Yeah, that's I uh, haven't seen anything on that yet. I think it was more to come uh, in the future on uh, on a hub. It's especially if there is, it depends on you know. There's certainly I think uh, one of the introductory speakers discussed the uh, you know potential opportunity for the lab to utilize. It depends on how that is all structured as well too. So I guess. The best answer is more to come on that. Yes. <laughs> okay. What are the requirements, specifications, et cetera, for a utility provider to bid as a vendor? Additionally, do you know what your data needs will be and when you would need them? Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, what, a utility vendor? Are you uh, are there? I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, I guess if we're looking at IT support and other uh, support of that nature from um, project services, uh, IT standpoint, uh, yes, uh, in terms of service provider to uh, our construction area for internet. Uh, Etc. Yeah, that'll that'll be part of uh, the bid packages when they come out. And again, uh, registering on the portal is something we need to to look at first. Okay, fantastic. Yes, I think this was specifically about internet needs. Yes, thank you. Will there be training on how to comply with Title Ten? There's um there's a uh, there's a couple of uh, organizations that already do some of that, um, and uh, we're fairly active in, in the community. Um, so one of the for one of the organizations, for instance, is the nuclear the United States Nuclear Infrastructure Council, and they often hold these um, uh, sessions and seminars, and they've held held training in the past. And I think I just heard that they're also going to be holding some training. So it might be good to reach out to. Uh, to the U.S. Nick, uh, you can find them out on the internet um, and uh, reach out to them and find out what their there may be something on their website too that talks about upcoming events and what their plans are. Okay. Is there preference for small business minorities, veteran-owned businesses in the bid process? Is there an Idaho preference? So that, that that's kind of the same answer to the earlier question relative to HUD. We're not exactly sure on the construction project what 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 are going to be the requirements with respect to small businesses and minority and women-owned business entities and those kinds of things. Um, however, I also I, I can tell you that uh, just preferentially we 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 are looking at uh, opportunities to get some Idaho companies involved. Unfortunately, with some of the specialty things that uh, we need that uh, there are limited opportunities for us, but uh, we're certainly seeking them uh, because we recognize the, you know, that the plant that goes first should get some benefit for that. Okay. So 
they, I've had a number of people um, ask about the slides already. Um, for those of you that are interested, I, I see your question, and if you guys could make them available, I'd be happy to send them out um, to those that are interested or everyone who um, tuned in today. And with that, you guys, I don't see any other questions. Thank you both very yeah, much. Fine. That's perfect. Well, thank right you now. for hosting. Thank no you very problem. much. I appreciate it. And the slides are fine to, to go out, uh, Amanda, to, to all in attendance today. Okay, perfect. I will get those out of the only thing we typically. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.